Hello, Studentin. So what should you do every day? Well, if you're already working with Duolingo, Babbel, Rosetta Stone, watching videos on YouTube, you're getting some inputs, you're even doing some practicing, but as your German teacher, I am excited to share with you a very special drill that students that go from just dabbling in German to actually speaking German, they do something like this. So I'm going to show you this drill, also set you up for doing it at home, you know, repeatedly on your own, and we're going to do the drill six times over with it always getting more and more difficult and with a different focus, a different grammar focus every time. So we're going to look at some of the hardest grammar that uh, that students tackle, whether that's something to deal with nouns, you know, gender, plural, case, especially case, the clensions that ties in as well. I'm really, really excited to share this with you. So without further ado, let's get started. This is how you set it up. So notice that there are columns and in the columns, I am putting words that belong together, right? Or parts of speech. So here I have der, die, das, which are three of the ways of saying the in German, right? The masculine way, the feminine way, the neuter way. In the second column, now I have a series of nouns. These are all masculine, feminine, or neuter nouns. And then in this next column, just a single verb. And in the final column, I have some common adjectives. So then how we do this exercise is we are gonna jump through the columns, making selections, and then write it all out, right? We're like, we're stringing sentences together. So again, I'm just gonna show this to you first. So if we start with der, Okay, so we're saying the, but we're saying the masculine the, so we have to pick a masculine noun. So for example, opa, okay, der opa. Now in the next column, we don't have a choice. It's just ist, and we're doing that on purpose. And then in the final column, picking out an adjective such as alt, right? So old, der opa ist alt. Okay, that's our first sentence. So then we go through again and we make a new selection such as D. So now we need to choose a feminine noun such as Schwester, sister. Again, in the next column, we don't have an option, that's by design. And then in the final column, we choose a different adjective such as klein, meaning small. D Schwester ist klein. Okay, so notice that the focus of this exercise, if I were to give it a label, is that here we're practicing noun gender and we're practicing it specifically in the nominative case, right, for subject nouns. And that's then all about the der, die, das getting paired up correctly with the various nouns in the second column. So one more example with this particular drill, das, now using the neuter way of saying the, specifically in the nominative case, right, used for subject nouns. Then we have to pick out a neuter noun such as kind, meaning child. Then we kept the verb simple, right? For all of these people, it's just ist the whole time, right? For is, and then for good measure, we're also practicing some common adjectives. Das Kind ist freundlich, the child is friendly. So again, we have der Opa ist alt, die Schwester ist klein, das Kind ist freundlich. So now on to the next drill. Again, it's the same setup. We have the same columns. It's even still just four. But now this time, we're going to be practicing specifically plural nouns. So we still have der, die, das. I put in an additional D as the plural D, right? Uh, that's kind of an optional thing if you find that confusing and you would rather work with just the one word D in the column and you know you use it for feminine nouns or for plural nouns, that's fine. But I decided to break it up this way. So now, still drawing on some of those uh, family members, right? Or just basic people nouns. We have Frau, Kind, Mena, right? The plural of man is Mena, men, Kinder, children, man, and now Frauen, right? Women. So now in the next column, we have to have two options. It can't be just ist. We also have to have sind for those plural nouns and then the same adjectives. So now if we run through this drill, 
we make a selection, dea. Okay, now we need a masculine noun and it has to be singular, not plural. So for example, der man, we have to choose the singular verb. So that's still going to be ist, just like we saw in the previous drill. And then whatever adjective suits our fancy, in this instance, groß, der man ist groß. Okay, now in the next one, we're choosing D and we're choosing the plural D, okay, the one that I put down at the bottom. So now we're gonna choose a plural noun such as Kinda. Kindi Kinda. Now we have to say sind, right? So that means are, the children are. And then we pick out a new adjective such as intelligent. D Kinda sind intelligent. Final example, D, but now the feminine singular D. D. Frau ist schön, beautiful. Die Frau ist schön. So then to recap, we have der Mann ist groß, die Kinder sind jung, die Frau ist schön. And that was using this sentence builder drill, focusing on plural nouns in the nominative case and practicing basic adjectives. So now move it along. This is the third iteration. We're going to focus now on that verb column, change things up there. So we still have der, die, das, and die again. We're going to work with those exact same nouns, right? Just man, Frau, Kind, and then their plurals, Frauen, Männer, and Kinder. And now, wow, check out our verb column. This has grown, okay? So we have wa and waren as the simple past tense. So this is were um, in, in English, but of course in German we have two different ways to say that, the singular way and now this plural way. And then still ist und sind in the present tense. Then we have wird and werden, which is the future tense, right? So will be. And then wäre and wären, which means would be. And then all of those same adjectives, right? So notice that when you're doing this drill, it's really important that you choose one, what thematic vocab you're going to work with, you know, like people or family members. Um, and it's also important that out of all of the columns, you have to decide what is your grammar focus, right? You don't want to have every column just, you know, filled to the gills with, with words. At least you don't want to start there. Um, it's better, like in how you saw in the very first drill, if you can have some columns that are so bare that they maybe even have just one word, so you're not making an actual selection at all. Um, and, and other columns that are longer because those are the ones you're focusing on. Here, since a lot of this is repeated, okay, I think it's still okay then to have the, the uh, so to have so many columns that are full because it's a lot of repeated information. Okay, so if we run through this, for example, D, and it's gonna be feminine singular, D Frau. Now what are we gonna choose? Okay, wäre. So the woman would be, right? The emphasis is on the verb tenses here. That's what we're practicing with this drill. D Frau wäre reich, right? So the woman would be rich. You know, like if she follows through with this great idea or if she had followed through with the great idea. Die Frau wäre reich, okay? And then it really should have more of a dot, dot, dot because there has to be other information with that. But anyway, we're staying focused. Das Kind war klein. Okay, so das Kind war klein, the child was small or short, and then of course it grows. And then finally, D, but now the plural D, die Männer werden alt. Okay, so the men become old, right, are getting old or will be old. Die Frau wäre reich, das Kind war klein, Die Männer werden alt. All right, this brings us to drill four. Here we're going to be focusing on adjectives and specifically adjectives that take declensions. The adjectives that we have used in the first three drills are to use the very grammar or term predicate adjectives, or as I like to say, standalone adjectives, and they don't take declensions. But in German, if you have an adjective that is coming in front of a noun, 
it has to take a declension. And so that's how we get these different versions of the kleiner, kleine, kleines, kleinen, right? And that has to then line up with either the der, die, das, or d, which we've seen before, or else I've added in an ein and an eine for two different ways to say a uh in the nominative case. Then we're back down to the more reduced uh, ist and sind, right? So we don't have to think so hard about that column. And then a simple da at the end for there, right? So we really don't have to think about that. So we're focusing, right, on how we pair up the first column, right, of determiners, or some people call them articles, and then the second column with adjectives that have declensions on them, also called um, uh, attributive adjectives, and then the third column of nouns and how they all have to tie together because of the gender of the noun, whoa. So for example, der, so this is gonna have to be a masculine noun, and if we say der, then the adjective is going to be kleine with what is the, the weak e declension. Then we choose man, right? That's really our, it's our only singular masculine option on our list. And then since it's singular, we have to say ist and then simply da, right? The short man is there. Der kleine man ist da, okay? The next example, now we're gonna say ein. So this is a, uh, and it's how you would say a uh, for either a masculine noun or a neuter noun. Okay, and we're going to use it for a neuter noun, ein kleines, right? And then kind, child, singular ist, and then da. So a small child is there, ein kleines kind ist da. Third example, d, this is the plural d, die kleinen kinder, and now plural sind and Da, okay, so to do these drills, right, you're coming into it with certain grammar knowledge that I'm really just glossing over right now. I'm assuming that you know what I'm talking about, okay, and because you have to have an understanding of whatever the grammar topic is and also know what the vocabulary is that you're working with in order to do the sentence building exercise, all right? Now in this drill, we have a fourth example too to practice eine. So this would be used for the feminine singular in the nominative case specifically. Eine kleine Frau ist da. So a small woman is there. Eine kleine Frau ist da. So then in sum, we had der kleine Mann ist da. Ein kleines Kind ist da. Die kleinen Kinder sind da, die kleine Frau ist da. Now in the fifth drill, we're going to be looking at the accusative case and the declensions that change because of the accusative case. So we're gonna go back to just our der, die, das. We're going to go back to this same set of family member nouns that we used way back at the beginning in drill one, and I think that was the only drill that it looked exactly like this. And then now one verb, right? So again, we're keeping as many columns as simple as possible so we can stay focused on what it is that we're really wanting to uh, home in on. So zit meaning sees, and then we have our masculine einen großen, that's the masculine option. Then eine große, that's the feminine option. And now ein großes is the neuter option, all for the accusative case, right? Used for direct objects. And then you have to select a masculine, feminine, or neuter noun from the final column. And all of these nouns are for like barnyard animals, right? Farm animals. So show you this drill. Der. Zone, so that means son, sieht, and now I choose one of these, eine große, and now I have to, from the final list, choose a feminine noun in order to match with the declensions that are on the eine and the große here for the accusative case. So if I choose a feminine noun, sau, okay? Der Sohn sieht eine große sau. Or we could say die... Tochter, the daughter, sieht 
make another selection, einen großen, okay, so because of the declensions, right, the en on the ein and the en on the groß, this has to be a masculine noun in the accusative case specifically, so we have to choose a masculine noun such as Hund, yeah? Die Tochter sieht einen großen Hund. So if you are a beginner, and at this point you're, you're feeling a little lost or a little overwhelmed, uh, that's okay, that's understandable. And I have other videos that uh, cover the grammar that I'm kind of taking for granted right now, cover that more in depth. So I encourage you to watch those videos. Okay, but moving on to our next example. Uh, for those who are far enough along that they can track with me. Das Kind sieht ein Großes. So this is going to be a neuter noun in the accusative case. Kaninchen. Okay, das Kind sieht ein Großes Kaninchen. The child sees a big bunny. Okay, so then we recap those. Der Sohn sieht eine große Sau. Die Tochter sieht einen großen Hund. Das Kind sieht ein großes Kaninchen. Okay, this is our final drill, drill number six, okay? So we still have the Deri Das. We still have these family members. Now we have a new verb, but again, it's just one because that's not our focus. So gibt meaning gives, and now check it out. We have the dative case. You have all of the same barnyard animals that we were just using, but now instead of being in the accusative case, they're in the dative case as indicated by the dame and the der, right? So the dame being used for masculine and neuter nouns and the der being used for feminine nouns. And now you have three options in the accusative case. Again, a masculine option, a feminine option, and a neuter option. So you go through building sentences, das Kind gibt der, so it's going to be a feminine noun in the dative case. We have to choose a feminine noun, ku, and then here you choose one of those final options where all the declensions have been put on for you, such as das frische Futter, okay? Das Kind, the child, gibt der Kuh, gives the cow, das frische Futter, the fresh feed, right? So like feed pellet kind of stuff. Or we could say die Schwester, sister, gibt dem, and after this selection, we choose either a masculine or a neuter noun, such as Bock, which is masculine, den bunten Klee. So over here, I'm also choosing the masculine option in the accusative case, just because the actual meaning of it makes the most sense, right? That the sister is giving the ram the colorful clover, okay? Die Schwester gibt dem Bock den bunten Klee. Final example, der Mann gibt dem Kalb die warme Milch. Okay? Der Mann gibt dem Kalb die warme Milch. Das Kind gibt der Kuh das frische Futter. Die Schwester gibt dem Bock den bunten Klee. Der Mann gibt dem Kalb die warme Milch. All right, so now how do you do more drills like this by yourself, at home? This is the setup. Work with a page, one page for every drill. Then you have to choose a title in that. You have to know, again, what you're working on, right? What grammar do you want to focus on? Do you want to focus more on the nominative case or one of the other cases? Do you want to focus on some aspect of verbs? Do you want to really practice the declensions that you put on to determiners and adjectives and how you pair that all up based on the case, right? You have to decide what you're focusing on. You have to also know what vocabulary you're going to use. And I highly recommend that you use thematic vocabulary, that you work with categories of vocabulary like people, clothing, furniture, foods, you know, that kind of a thing, and not just random smatterings of words, okay? That would be what I recommend, unless perhaps part of your the work that you're doing is maybe you're reading a book or something where you're getting a lot of random vocabulary and you want to practice that vocabulary, I could see that, okay? But if that's not the case, I recommend working with thematic vocabulary. Um, then in every column, I would max it out at 12 words personally. I wouldn't do more than that because the idea of the drill is that although we just did three sentences for every drill, you should do at least one sentence 
for every word in the column that you're really focusing on. Yeah. Or if you want to get all the more out of it, do two for every word, three for every word, right? The idea is to use a drill as much as possible by zigzagging as much as you can, right? And getting a lot of variety and giving your brain that opportunity to internalize the information, both the vocabulary and the grammar concept. Okay. So then, uh, as you saw in so many of the drills have columns, such as the verbs, for instance, where there is just the one selection, there's nothing to think about, or if you have to, two selections, right? But try to have your focus columns be the ones that are longer and have everything else as simple as you can make it, okay? Then once you have your drill set up and you're actually doing the exercise, like I've already mentioned, right, that you're doing at least one sentence per each focus word, extra bonuses if you do some sort of color coding system or symbols or something so that you further analyze the sentences that you're writing and, and really should have it set up where you have your columns you know, at the top of the page and then you still have space underneath, you know, many lines of space where you can write down each of the individual sentences that you're doing. So then with those sentences, once you have them, you can color code for case. I always do that with my students or color code the gender of the noun, stuff like that, where you're, you're just, you're analyzing what you've just written to further internalize important grammar concepts. All right. Then very crucial. If you really, really want to learn, you have to have someone check your work, right? You should have a native check your work. And, uh, you know, there are various platforms out there that will help connect you to native speakers of, you know, whatever language so that you can find a German native speaker who for, you know, some free exchange or else that, that, that you can pay, you know, will check these drills for you and be able to tell you if you've actually done something wrong. Cause the last thing you want to do is draw drill in uh, incorrect information, right? So that's important. And then remember that just like you saw in this video, you can take a drill that you've created and then make just a minor tweak to it and reuse it again, which is good. That just furthers the learning where you can keep as many columns as possible unchanged, but essentially just choose a different column that is now your focus and build that one out while shrinking other ones down, right? But then like we did in this video, have a body of vocabulary that you're working with in a series of drills with different foci and, um, you know, and that again is just all to your good. Okay. So all of this said, I, I am so excited to also solicit some comments from you. If you, after going through this video, feel like there is a particular handout of some kind that I could provide to you that you would experience as very helpful, whether it's a template of uh, this drill exercise, or it's some additional exercises created for you that you can just print off and do, or I don't know, lists of thematic vocabulary that you can then plug in, or, or some other idea of your own. If you can think of something that you would appreciate me creating for you, please leave that in a comment below. All right, now, I again encourage you if you uh, stuck through, stuck with me through this video, even though there were places where I was like talking over your head when it came to the grammar that I was assuming you had some familiarity with, I encourage you to search for my YouTube videos where I talk about various grammar concepts uh, much more in depth than I did in this one. Or if you want to just stay on for the ride at this point, then Keep watching with me here on YouTube by clicking on that next video. See you there.